Comment in the chat saying you didn't know this stream was live. Josh Strife says just takes four-year-old clips and recycles them. I mean, he does. That's one of our business strategies. We have many, many revenue streams and uh, recycling content, of course, is one of the most popular, most famous. We learned it all from MMORPGs when you can just re-release the same thing with a slightly different skin. It's all there. Okay, just getting ready. Just, uh, just preparing. Found another Reese's peanut butter egg here. Oh no, it's all melted. Oh, oh no. That's not what I wanted. I suppose it is warm today. Right, well, that plan's been put on hold until later. Oh, rip. Rip me. Rip in peace. The, honestly, I'm going to be real, though. The energies, the vibes are off now. The whole thing. Like, I was just... I'm not feeling it. Oh, it's a poor start. It's a poor... I, I was so ready. I've put time aside to eat that Reese's egg before the whole thing started, and then I just opened it, and it's melted. And... Oh, vibes are off. You know what? I'm just going to sit here and drink some tea for a few minutes, get the vibes back. It's all right. There's no, no rush. For those of you wondering, yes, this is one of the mugs I stole from Jagex. I'm not making that up if you hold it. If you look just carefully, you can kind of make out the Jagex game logo on the side of it. It's like you have to catch the reflection of the light. It's just perfect. Hang on. Why is there a why is there a double double audio? Oh, I've got my own stream open. What a narcissist. It's alright, changed it. It's gone now. There we go, it's fine. You can hear you can hear an ego. I think you mean an echo, but you were also correct. You can definitely hear an ego. Like, it was definitely Echo, but... Yeah. I have... Yeah, I've borrowed the mug. Okay, ladies and gents, welcome to the stream. I can see we've already got Myth with us, we've already got Darcy, and we've already got Coco, which means we're probably going to make at least some progress this stream. For those of you who haven't been here before, allow me to explain how Lazy Man Mode works. There are many talented old-school RuneScape and RuneScape 3 content creators who make fantastically interesting series by limiting what they can do. You know, what they can use, where they can adventure. They play Iron Man mode, so they have to be entirely self-sufficient. They they pretty much prove their mastery over the game. I'm doing the exact opposite. Okay? I am not an Iron Man. I can trade freely, and indeed will need to, to complete this challenge. I am essentially offloading all of the work of completing this onto you. So, for example, the next thing we need to do is the Sleeping Giants quest. I can start this quest by talking to... Okay, Al Karid on the map. Brilliant. Coco, I'm going to follow you. Coco, could you please walk me to Al Karid? There we go. It's very simple. It's a very simple concept. It is literally, I'm going to do as little work as possible. I want to drink as much tea as possible and just... Just relax, just chill, just vibe, while you guys are pretty much completing this account for me. So, if I can grab a taxi to somewhere, I will do. If I can just be given an item instead of getting it, I will do. I think what it was, was... Someone pointed something out to me, many, many years ago. I was... I was working in a restaurant at the time. Well, I was working in a shop near a restaurant at the time. And what happened was, a celebrity went into the restaurant. And it was a big thing, and it was like, ooh, big famous person. And at the end, the owner of the restaurant said, No, not a problem free on the house on the house you don't pay for anything not to me but to the celebrity they're like free on the house and that got me thinking i thought hang on of all the people that could definitely afford to pay for the meal they've just had this person's one of them you know they could definitely afford to pay for what they've just eaten they are a celebrity they have a lot of money and then i realized it's really strange when people find a level of success we offer them opportunities and chances that effectively almost compile that success. It's like, yeah, there's a perfect thing in um, game, you said it in chat, the more money you have, the less you pay. So when you are a, a well-known rich person, and you go and do something, no one will ever charge you for anything, because they're like, oh no, you're a snub, you don't pay for that. That's how they become rich, the rich get richer. Now I, of course, have benefited from this as well. I've gone to various conventions, and they've been like, oh, here are some meal vouchers, you know? Here is a, a meal voucher for a free meal from somewhere over there. You can, if long as, like at the NEC, when we go to the uh, Insomnia Fest, they, they feed the creators there, that's great. They're like, okay, you're gonna be here working, here is your meal, brilliant. I'm gonna pay for that, fantastic. But, what kind of shocks me is the more success you find, 
the more opportunities present themselves to gain when you really don't need to be gaining. It, it's very, very strange. It's like, oh, hey, we'll, we'll give you this for free. They don't need it. They're the kind of people that definitely don't need the freebies. But if you walk in and you have no money, oh, they won't give you anything about that at all. It's almost like when you have extra money in the bank, the interest rate that you gain is really, really small. But when you owe the bank money, oh, man, the interest rate that you owe them then is massive. They're like, oh, you've got a million pounds in your bank. OK, cool. We'll give you an extra thousand pounds a year. There you go. And they're like, oh, you're five pound overdrawn. Well, you're going to owe us 50 quid a day. All right, sweet. Oh, hang on. Uh, let's just talk to this genie. Thank you. Yep, give me the genie. I appreciate that. And Myth wishes to trade with me. Myth, what are we trading? This story is going somewhere. You're giving me three oak logs, a hammer, some nails, a bucket of water, some wool, and a chisel. I'm going to take ten guesses and say that I need that for the, the quest I'm about to do. So I'm going to accept that and just assume that's the correct thing. Thank you for that. But no, here's the, the where I'm going with this. You can't really fight that because people will always want to give the successful and the celebrity, if you will, more stuff. And I thought... Yes, I probably do have enough RuneScape knowledge to play an Iron Man and do relatively successfully, do relatively well. However, I am aware that I have also developed and cultivated that level of celebrity, if you will, uh, that allows me to just exploit you guys and have you do all of it for me and give me all the free things. And as much as I would like to fight the system, that sounds like effort. That sounds like a lot of time. So instead, I'm just going to embrace it and get all the free things and just you know, live life on Easy Street for a little bit. Yeah. What's the... Yeah, so we go. Cat says, exploit me, daddy. I will do. And uh, Tem says, nice rant. Oh, mate, there's gonna be so many more. Don't you worry. So many more. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm fully 100% exploiting everyone's uh, help. I mean, Coco, I don't even know where we are right now. You've walked me all the way here. I have no idea where we are. I'm going to assume this is the right place because, like, it, it kind of looks like it should be. But are the hill giants going to attack me? If they're aggressive, I, I will run away. Like, uh, yes, I'm guessing I need to be... Let's just have a, another quick check of where this quest actually starts before walking into the, the danger bit. I'm going to assume it's that thing just there on the map. So, yeah, Coco, I'm going to follow you. If you could just run me to that thing on the map, that'd be great. Thank you very much. Finally made it to the stream, you say? Oh, there we go. Excellent. All right, we ran past them. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. We've ran past, we're out of the way. Uh, strike? That's weird. It says... It doesn't say hit, it says strike. Strike the hill giant. Hi. I suppose I could strike the hill giant. Let's see what happens. I, I'm intrigued. Strike. Wait. Says the hill giant. Oh, by the way, if you've not been to the stream before, everything is fully voiced. I know that it slows the stream down greatly, but I enjoy doing it, so that's going to happen. Josh, strike Hayes. Oh, man. The upcoming part is instance, so now you actually have to do stuff. Oh, for God's sake. Okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to complain about it the entire time, okay? Uh, is it slavery if they willingly signed up to it? No. No, that's called volunteers. I like that. It's uh, it's not slavery. If, it's, if you volunteer to do it, it's absolutely fine. And if you're here, you're volunteering to do it. All right, here we go. Let's just uh, strike some giants, shall we? Yeah, your interns. Your unpaid interns. That's what this is. Uh, please, Josh, I'm begging here, notice me. Firstborn man, you are noticed. You're not only noticed, you're valuable. You're cared for. You are an essential member of society, both emotionally and productively. You are a nice person. And people say nice things about you. I'd like everyone in the chat right now to say some nice things about firstborn man. They don't even need to be true. Just make up something nice. Some of it might be true, some of it might not. All right? You got some nice things coming at you right now. How dare you? Firstborn man is awesome. Check that out. He was the first to be born. He was the first man ever. Thanks, Adam, for joining the stream. I'm glad you're here. Right, hill giant. Wait. Do not attack. What the? You can talk? Do. Do not. Fl fight. You, you don't want to fight me. Want. No. Need. Your help. Interesting. Firstborn man, you are the best. Yes, there we go. See, you are. Big Tingly Taco says firstborn man has nice feet. Not quite the compliment kind of avenue that I was hoping we'd head down, but I'm glad we've gone down it. You know, I'm glad that you've, you've felt the confidence to say that. Let's not continue to explore that route. The gate on that specific avenue of compliments has closed. The gate on other more generic compliments, very open. The specifics of their feet... 
No, no. Let's wait until after 10 o'clock. It's only 20 past 8. Let's give it... Is it... Like, that again is me showing my age. There was a very specific thing in the UK where when it hits like 10 o'clock, it was called the watershed. I have no idea why that was the phrase used for it, but after 10 o'clock at night, all late night programs suddenly featured boobs. That was... It was great. That's why it was always like every child's bedtime was either 9 or 10 o'clock. Whoever said boomer, stop it, right? Everywhere. Soon as it hits 9 or 10 o'clock, Eurovision, Euro trash. No, not Eurovision, Euro trash. Okay, D very different things. If Eurovision started and there was just boobs flopping everywhere, all right, whoever gets the best boobs wins. That's how that competition would go. Euro trash, that's what I'm thinking of. But no, 10 o'clock, soon as 10 o'clock hits, the watershed moment happens. You get that five minute free view on uh, the adult channels. I'm really aging myself now. But uh, let's get back to RuneScape. That that took a tangent. That uh, that definitely took a tangent. Back to RuneScape. If anyone's there thinking, oh my god, is this where all the clips come from? Uh, no. So what happens is I will talk absolute bollocks for about 95% of the stream. And then I will say 5%, you know, brilliant, insightful, genius clips with spot on comic timing they will get clipped and everyone will think that's what i'm like all the time it's like the highlights of baseball if you just watch live baseball boring as hell watch the actual highlights fantastic because that's when the good stuff happens okay cool right giants can't talk uh, they're very sure they can please says the giant start the sleeping giants quest yes okay that's what we need we need some inventory slots done three Right, we need oak logs, but I've been given noted oak logs. This is unacceptable. Utterly unacceptable. I'm going to trade these with someone. I need somebody to bring me some unnoted oak logs. I know that you probably did tell me to uh, put those oak logs in the bank and then withdraw them, but that didn't happen. I'm going to blame you for that. Now, I've not done this quest, so everyone just pay attention. Everyone pay attention. Ooh, okay. Interesting. I know that dead air is a crime on Twitch and radio and YouTube, but I also legitimately have not played this quest and genuinely want to enjoy it. Right, uh, did you build this? No. Kovac. Ancestor build. Nice. Is the Tangent Tavern with Callum still happening? The Tangent Tavern will eventually be coming back when we have a new studio for it, without a doubt. Am I going to play Starfield when it comes out? I have no idea. People are like, will you play Diablo 4? Will you play Starfield? Will you play... Was it Ashfall, the next thing coming out? Will you play this? Will you play that? It's probably. You forget that I'm both very lazy and focused on nostalgia. I've just finished my two and a half hour video about Chrono Trigger. That will hopefully come out tomorrow. And then I have one hell of a plan for a massive World of Warcraft video. Thoughts on New World Season 2? I have had no thoughts one way or the other at all. Will I do a review for Genshin Impact? I reviewed Genshin Impact ages ago. But I will at some point, definitely. Yeah, Chrono Trigger was, uh, was a great game. I, I found problems with it, don't get me wrong. I found problems. Sora, thank you for the sub. I see you there. Good to see you again. Hopefully you're having a good day. All right, cool. So this is the Giants Foundry quest. Giants used to be nice. Kovac looks out at the tools around you. Help fix. I will help fix. Witness me, Mr. Streamer. I have indeed witnessed you. Wands. All right, cool. So... I'll help you make weapons. Giants made weapons. Cool. Um, you guys can't even see the... Hang on, you can't even see the words. If I go here, you can see the words. There we go. Now it makes more sense to you. I like how everyone was just so polite no one mentioned it. People were like, should we tell Josh that he's using these cameras and the way of the words? No, no. No, let him figure it out. Let him, let him learn. He needs to make mistakes. He needs to learn how to be an actual streamer. Someone did. We have dubs. Yeah, I mean, are you are you a subs guy or a dubs guy? That's what it is. Are you are you reading or are you listening? I could just change what they were saying. You wouldn't know. Kovac once helped giants remember. Many years ago, Kovac brother, big, green, giant, used to make weapons. Now, sells sweet corn. You don't know he didn't say that. You have no proof that wasn't actually part of the quest. You have no idea. You gotta believe me. All right, cool. So we need two oak logs to fix the broken polishing wheel. We only have oak logs, but we need oak logs. There does however seem to be a bank over here though, so I'm gonna assume that was what that was designed for. 
So we put the oak logs away. Then we pull the oak logs back out. Oh, fine. I'll do it, but I'm not running. All right. This is lazy man mode. Have I tried Mortal Online 2? Unfortunately, yes. I was given a beta code for it. Um, it was fine. That's pretty much the extent of it. He, made, he did make me work to deposit my items, but my god, I will walk slowly. What is this thing? Looks like a wheel to me. Right. Kovac ponders your question. He ponders Kovac think he know. Polishing wheel. Make things shiny. Alright, cool. Let's repair the polishing wheel. Make some things shiny. Do a bit of, uh, bit of hammering. A bit of leather crafting. Cool. Polishing wheel is sorted. We don't, uh, we don't use it yet. We'll use it soon, don't worry. Then we fix the grindstone. Have I tried Star Citizen? Uh, no. Oh, yeah. What is my sock of the week? Ah, aha, uh -huh. it's a trick question. It's very warm in the UK. Not wearing socks right now. No, you could not have that on camera. That will definitely be going on OnlyFans. You think I'm lying? I'm not lying. I wouldn't lie to you. Do you think I'd lie to you? Do you, th do you think I would lie to you? Does this need a poll? Do you need an OnlyFans editor? Trust me, Visa. You don't want that. All right, you, right now, you see me in a very professional light. That will change. You don't want that to change. <laughs> okay, hang on. Oh, let's just poll. Would... Would I lie to you? Would I lie to you? That's the question. Yes. No. The poll has started right now. Let me know. All right, cool. So let's uh, continue fixing this stuff. I'm not really paying too much attention to the quest. I want to just push through them. It's not about enjoying MMOs. It's about completing MMOs. No one plays an MMO for the enjoyment or the process or the journey. You just get to the end and then people say, was it a good game? Don't know. Just got to the end. Is the end good? Don't know. Got no context. What you can do now? Move on to the next one and then be sad. Pretty much it. Why do you play MMOs? Chase the, uh, chasing the dragon from years past from childhood love of enjoying the actual journey with friends and family and guilds and clans. And the people are like, do you, do you actually enjoy MMOs? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I've just, I feel I've just committed so much of my life to being the guy that plays them that it's just, I kind of have to now. We're in there. For anyone in the chat genuinely worried, uh, no, I do very much enjoy games still. I enjoy games when I play them like this, because this is you and me playing a silly game together. It's you and me playing a children's medieval clicker. That's what we're doing. It's, yeah, the sunk cost fallacy. That's definitely what it is as far as time goes. Okay, cool. So we're going to fix the Giant's Foundry. I'm guessing the Giant's Foundry is like a mini game that you end up doing something with in the future. I'm going to assume it is anyway. When's the last time you genuinely delighted and amazed by an MMO? Um... Oh, now you've made me sad. Okay, so... I think that the last time I genuinely had a lot of fun with an MMO was probably whenever it involves you guys. Uh, Guild Wars 1 was really good fun because there were you, everyone was involved. When I leave this cave and we go back, that will be fun. Everyone will be you know, involved there. Right, what do we need? We need to do some more stuff. What do you want, Kovac? Kovac says that I can make a sword now. It's an Iron Man smithing training game. It has rewards. Oh, there they are. Look at all these Iron Men. Why is the first person I right-click on called Rim Me Daddy? Thanks, RuneScape. Just of all the people that I... Why is Rim Me Daddy and Bung With make... You know, I don't want to know. It's fine. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. RuneScape as Andrew Gower intended. This is how it's meant to be. Oh, this is exactly what it should be. Right, now we make a sword. Come on. What do we do? Kovac, you supply me. You want a flat broadsword. All right. Flat broadsword. May I'll make you a flat broadsword. No problem at all. That wasn't a euphemism. I'm actually going to smith him a flat, a flat broadsword. Say that ten times fast. Wow. Woo, Giant's Foundry. Spend a lot of time there on my Iron Man. We will spend no time here because anything I need, you guys will give me. You know? If I'm not exploiting my streamer privilege, why am I playing? Search crate. Take ice. Oh, hang on. Bring the following items. Either ice gloves or a bucket. I've got a bucket already. We rummage through the box and find a bunch of metal. Nice. 
Take some bars and weapons from the crate. Oh, I see. You will need 20 free inventory slots to take the items from the crate. Oh, my goodness. Fine. The name Swear Filter broke a year or two ago and Jagex just didn't fix it. That sounds very Jagex. Very Jagex. Taran, good evening to you as well. How are you doing this evening? I hope you're having a lovely evening. Genuinely do. Let's just stick all these... I'll use the lamp. What would annoy you guys the most for me to use the lamp on? Like something that just absolutely does not need a lamp at all whatsoever. Fletching. We're leveling Fletching. We've gained 10 Fletching experience. Fantastic. Uh, let's just put this back. People are like, oh, you're being lazy. Someone else will get me a lamp. It's fine. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. This is what we need. I don't think I need that. You guys are probably... That sounds... Hang on. Do you need... Did it say you need 28 inventory slots for this? Because that's all of them. Let me just search the crate, see what I can get. 20. Okay, cool. Not 28. So I've, I've got enough now. I'll run because I'm being lazy and want to finish this quickly. Okay, cool. Take the items. Yes. Oh, that, well, goodness me. That's a lot of items. Okay, right. Uh, fill the crucible with items and bars until it's full. Right. So is this effectively a way that you can... Is this an item sink for low-level smithing stuff? That's very clever. Okay. So we fill it with bronze bars. Then we fill it with iron bars. Then I'm assuming we fill it with these things as well. Okay, so fill crucible. That's just... What would you like to add? Do I have to right-click that and use that to add? Check crucible. If I use a bronze battle axe on it... Oh, okay, cool, yeah, you can add all those as well. Right. This is quite clever. I get it. I like item sinks. This reminds me a lot of Mobilizing Armies, which was a game that I played to death in, um, in RuneScape 3. Kelly, my goodness, thank you very much for the donation. That's remarkably kind of you. Glad to finally catch a stream. I was wondering, any recommendations for improving one's general speech? Always admire the vocabulary of your content and how smoothly it's spoken, and I strive to improve my communication. That's a really good question. So, when I was in university, I used a lot of what we call nesting phrases, which are the, interestingly, only universal human sound from almost every culture and every language, and that's when people say, uh, or, um, they fill silences with noise. And it takes a long time to train yourself out of doing this. And the reason that it's really important to do this is, and I'll take a slight tangent from playing the game to explain this. When you walk on stage, if there are people in the room that you are presenting to, or talking to, or a business meeting, any kind of situation where other people are waiting for you to deliver information to them, you have all the power. They have a problem, you have the solution, and they are waiting for you. Depending on how you act will, will change their opinion of you moment to moment. So if I'm five minutes late and I walk in somewhere and I say, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry I'm late. There was this and there was this and there was this. You wouldn't believe this. I'm, just, I'm so sorry. Straight away, their opinion of me drops. If I walk in and go, thank you for waiting, walk up to the start and go, right, let's begin. Their opinion of me, even if they might be annoyed at me, which is totally understandable, I am late, their opinion of me goes up slightly. Their respect, the admiration. The annoyance, absolutely, but also the authority I have in that room. When you are thinking about something to say, if you fill a silence with a noise, a nesting noise, like mm or er or any kind of fiddling that you would do, it immediately diminishes your authority. The people in the room want to hear valuable and important words from you. They do not want to hear random noises. They do not want to hear ums or ers, because that is you effectively trying to fill a silence while stalling for time to think about what to say. The irony is the process of filling that silence is itself showing that you are not comfortable with that silence. And here's a, a cheat code for human psychology. People hate silences. They hate them. Absolutely everyone hates that awkward silence.
It's an interrogation technique. You sit down with someone in front of you, stare at them silently. They will start talking just to fill the silence. So if you start going um, uh, um, uh, all the time, you are showing that you are just as annoyed and afraid as that silence as they are. Don't be. Walk into the room straight away. Thank you for waiting. Let's begin. And if you can't think of something to say, take a minute. Let that silence happen. Hold it. They will be far more awkward than you are. And then speak. As far as how to become more eloquent, honestly, watch people who are way better than me. There are many, many eloquent people. Because if I was to show you all of the outtakes that I have when making YouTube videos, they could fill an entire video themselves. I've got so many outtakes where I mess up so many lines and I script and record everything and I fall over and trip over my words all the time but you don't see that on YouTube because I edit it out why do I do Twitch well for one of them it's because I enjoy interacting with you guys for the second reason it's because this is my challenge to not trip over my words to not say something I'm going to get cancelled for without meaning to say it this is my challenge to see if I can constantly on my feet think without saying um or uh for about two or three hours and it's difficult and i fail a lot but the failures are the stepping stones to improving so if you want to improve your own vocabulary or improve your presentation look into stopping to say um and uhs and when you catch yourself doing it forgive yourself you don't need to beat yourself up don't need to be angry just stop and chill so what i'm saying is this is all pre-recorded yes can you say, um, every 10 seconds for uh, the next, um, five minutes? Uh, I can try, yeah. Only trials! Hey, dude. It's, uh, it's good to see you. How, uh, how are you doing? I am finishing the, uh, Giants Foundry quest at the minute. And what we're trying to do at the minute is, uh, just see what Kovac needs with everything. Uh, okay, so how do I go about setting up a mold to sort in the parts? So now I'm doing all the stuff people normally do. Are you seeing how irritating it is and how damaging it is to the authority that you think somebody has when presenting? Uh, cover on being a told to sort of thing for three parts, blade in the tip. Uh, the quest guide changed. Use the mold jig, select each part, each mold is different. I'll, I'll go back and have a look at some. Um, uh, yeah, kind of. I'll go back and have a, have a look at all this. I, I want to just, um... Right. Okay, so we've got the mold jig forte blit. Can you see how irritating it is? As soon... Oh, that's another thing that people do all the time. When you are reading something, if someone else is watching you read it, if it's time sensitive, people tend to do that thing where they mumble the words to themselves. They constantly mumble it. Like if I was doing it now on screen, I'd be like, Giants Foundry Mold Setup, Commission, Flat Broad, Forte, Blaze, Temps. Here's the truth no one actually reads like that. The only reason people say those no noises, say those words, is because they need to let other people around them know that that is the point they're reading right now. And they need to let them know because they value that person's opinion and authority greater than their own. If I need to read something and there's people in the room with me, I'm not going to mumble the words out loud. I'm just going to read silently to myself and at the end be like, Okay, I've got it. And that, what that causes is everyone else to wait for me. And it sounds incredibly arrogant that you can force people to do that. But when you become comfortable with doing it, you very quickly understand. And this unfortunately is where the whole NPC culture has come from. You very quickly understand that a lot of people are very uncomfortable when they are the center of attention or other people are waiting for them. Now, the reason I hate the whole NPC discussion, and this is a separate tangent we've got to go off on for a second. When you say that someone has a main character, is this now an alpha male guru stream? You know what? Yeah, it is, except most alpha males get it wrong because what they think is alpha is actually arrogant, narcissistic, sociopathic, and downright rude. 
First of all, the entire study about alpha wolves was already flawed in itself, and the person that did the study has come out and said this only seems to happen in captivity. So if they're referencing the whole alpha wolf thing, you know, there's always an alpha wolf, you're already actually putting yourself in the position of a creature that's in captivity. And then people have gone on to say, well, actually, it's the sigma, it's the theta, it's the this, it's the that, it's the other, it's the next one, it's whatever. All you're doing is going through the Greek and the Roman alphabet trying to find letters that outrank each other to say that you are greater than somebody else because you're putting yourself higher up on this imaginary hierarchy. The word alpha has unfortunately, of course, been tainted by people using it in incredibly rude, domineering, controlling ways, but if we're going to use the word alpha and attempt to reclaim it, how about having it be the kind of person that people respect? and admire and want to be with and most importantly when you spend time with that person they want to bring you up to the best you can be instead of push you down in order to keep them the top of the totem pole and i know that i'm getting quite passionate about this but this is something that really really irritates me because i was a teacher for a hell of a long time and when i was teaching in schools young guys have awful role models because of, and it's not just the whole boomer thing of, our oh, social media bad. No, social media has, a, has definitely done some damage to society, but it's also provided us with huge amounts of opportunities for both networking and jobs and general connections. What it has unfortunately allowed to do is allow the loudest, the most arrogant, the rudest, the most violent, and the most aggressive people a platform to say, look at me, I'm the best. And unfortunately, because of how young, impressionable minds work, they look at people who are the loudest and the most violent and assume that they are in control. I absolutely hate the fact that so many young boys are looking up, and I understand that's a kind of sexist remark to make, but unfortunately the numbers do overwhelmingly show that it is young boys looking up to these alpha male or sigma role models and acting in an incredibly unfriendly way to both their peers and any authority figures. It's awful that that's a generation that's being raised to believe that is what they need to be. And I'll tell you exactly why they're doing that. And it's a horrible realization, but it's because people are scared of where they fit in with society. People are not confident. People don't feel safe. They don't feel secure, whether it's in their friendship groups, their social groups, their family groups, their jobs. People want to feel a level of control over their own lives, and so instead of going out and researching and discovering who you are through trial and error, which itself is scary and painful, they just look for these loud, obnoxious people who say, hey, if you do everything I tell you, you will be successful. This is what people want. Listen to me, I know what's best for you. And that sucks. That really sucks. You guys all know the, the, the role models unfortunately that these young guys are looking up to and idolizing and they're disgusting you want a role model to look up to keanu reeves you know dude lost so much throughout his young life and is still one of the kindest people working around there just being genuine making sure everyone's okay making sure everyone feels like they are the best version of themselves that's a role model you want to look up to so, yeah, this is the reason that irritates me so much, the whole kind of alpha thing. People do need role models. And who you look up to as a role model should be the kind of person that you want to emulate in life and become like. And unfortunately, the vast majority of those people now are just loud, obnoxious, and boisterous. You want a role model? Someone in chat said, go and be like Jack Black, without a doubt. Go and be like Jack Black. I... I see so many young guys, especially from like high school, college level, talking about wanting all the money, wanting all the respect, wanting all the power, wanting all the admiration. Look, guys, if you're in the RuneScape, uh, if you're in old school RuneScape right now and you've you followed to help me, I very much appreciate the fact that you are just standing around alking while I am just ranting about people having bad role models. But I appreciate the fact that you've come down, you've given your time, and. It's, <laughs> Ascendant, do you know this is going to happen? Like, are you sat there going, all right, guys, everyone's settling for a long elk session. He's gone on a rant again. He's talking about something he cares about. Everyone going, let's get a quick God Wars run in while we're here. You know, we've got time. That kind of stuff. But yeah, the... 
sports was a big one for it. People look up to sports stuff. When I was a kid, my role model was Jim Carrey. Again, a good role model to have. A very, very successful guy who has struggled through a lot of his life. But what I really do think that role models should be, and I think that the the kind of alpha thing, you know, you've seen that picture of, you know, Giga Chat, the idea that just absolutely ridiculously ripped dude with an incredibly square jaw, and everyone always paints him as the good opinion and someone else as the bad opinion. You want to be alpha in any way? Be the kind of person that everyone wants to invite to the party. Not just the obnoxious teenage boys who are like, oh my god, this dude's got loads of cars and loads of money and he's going to treat all these women incredibly disrespectfully. No, no, be the person that everyone wants at the party. Because you're going to make everyone feel good about themselves. You're going to ask people how their day is going. If they get a little bit, you know, insulting towards you, that doesn't matter. You can take it. You understand maybe they're having a bad day. Maybe they're not in the best headspace right now. Everything rolls off you like water off a duck's back. It's not a problem at all. Be the guy that shows up with pizza. Be the guy that sits someone down and says, okay, man, I know you're going through a hard time right now. Let's talk about it. That kind of stuff. That is the role model that you should have. That is who you should be. You know, pleasing everyone's not a good idea. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, pleasing everyone's not a good idea at all, because eventually if you please everyone, you're not only going to sacrifice your own identity to do it, but you're going to end up pleasing people who are themselves offensive people. So I'm not saying please everyone at all. I'm saying that if you're going to go to a party and you like the kind of people that are there, or either gathering or just have people say good things about you behind your back, that kind of stuff. Did I play in the new D&D movie? I did not, although I definitely would have done had I have been invited. I would have loved to be in the new D&D movie. I thought it was genuinely really good. Giga Chad is not what everyone wants it to be. It's what women want. Thus, men want to be like him. Again, that is... Uh, and this is the thing that really irritates me. Not you personally, but the entire idea. When people say, oh, what do women want? I'm sorry, are we, are we lumping every single woman into this giant amorphous blob with one single consciousness that every single one of them agree on? Not at all. Instead of looking at what men want, what women want, how about just what this individual person wants? Instead of lumping everyone together into this big group, say, right, okay, what do you want? People always say, oh, I'm going to try and impress women. Okay, that's a, that's a broad demographic you're going for there. It's a very specific, uh, large demographic with a hell of a lot of nuance and changes within it. How about, uh, I like that individual person I want to go and talk to them see how they're doing people think that there is like a cheat code that if you do or say or act everyone will suddenly want you when the truth honestly is be respectful to people take care of yourself as far as body and hygiene goes to the extent that you are comfortable with treat people with respect talk to people Make your intentions obvious and clear. And then don't change your opinion of people based on how they do or don't feel about what you do or don't want in relation to them. You know? If you've got a crush on someone, it's okay to tell them. It's okay if they don't reciprocate. If they don't and it's awkward to you and you don't want to talk to them again, that's fine as well. If they don't reciprocate and they understand that you're not going to change how you treat or how you act toward them, great. Keep going with that. That's fine. It's honestly mostly about communication. It really is. And yeah, the other answer is if that doesn't work, you can just press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start, select. And that will get you like a partner immediately. Someone said to me when I was a teacher, how do I get a girlfriend? And I said to them, you're asking the wrong question change the question to how do I become someone worth dating? What do you bring to the table? And they're like, oh, I'm a nice guy. Okay, cool. That is the bare minimum. I hate that phrase. Oh, I'm a nice guy. Congratulations. You're at one out of 10. You know, this is the absolute bare minimum that you need to meet. That's like advertising a film with a poster that says it has a plot. The actors are visible. Sometimes there's sound. All right, cool. You're a nice guy. Sweet. If that is what you go to for your this is what's impressive about me, that just shows almost anyone that's talking to you that you really want a medal for doing the bare minimum. And I don't mean to offend anyone, 
but you shouldn't get praise for doing the absolute bare minimum. I'm going to do a bit of quest, then we'll come back to complaining about nice guys. Because if that's all you've got going for you, then my god, you really need to start working on something else. Right, what are we making? Um, what am I? What have I been told to do? I do not remember what I've been told to do at all. I think I want to do flat things. Flat something? Let's talk to the Kovac. What am I doing? Yeah, what am, what am I doing, Kovac? Uh, Kovac not sure himself. You helped Kovac, Kovac helped you. Thanks, mate. Right, fill each part of the mold. Forte, blade, and tip. All right, so we'll fill the forte blade. Flat and broad. All right, cool. So we're going to make a flat, broad sword. Let's go with a flat gladius or a chopper forte. Ooh, chopper forte sounds nice. We'll go with that one. And then we'll go with the blades. Ooh, medusa, maybe? So we're looking for flat and broad. Ooh, okay. So what about... Uh, yeah, there we go. Medusa blade, broad. And then the tips... We got a flat and a broad one there. Flat and narrow. Broad and spiked. Interesting. Oh. Oh, that's nice. I like these things. Okay, we'll go with broad. Broad's there. Flat and broad. We'll set that mold. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, I tuned in during a fiery part, it seems. Love seeing him get worked up and not pointed at me. For hey, I'm never pointed at you. I'm never angry at you, Rage. Rage Darling, by the way, for everyone in the chat, has recently come back from Germany when she did a fantastic job casting for Method. They're like a proper guild who do things properly in games. You know, in World of Warcraft specifically, you should go and watch Rage Darling's casting of the, the race to world first in World of Warcraft, which I hear is a game. So yeah, um, she's done really well for herself. So well done. She also plays now Dungeons & Dragons campaign of Session Zero. She is the barbarian, hence the name Rage. Okay, we've made some progress in the quest. Let's go back to ranting about nice guys. Where was I with this rant? That was it. I was at the point of like... Oh, I'm a nice guy, all right? We're going to need some more than that, champ. We're very much going to need more than that going on. The problem is that if you have to say you're a nice guy, you probably aren't. Y you don't get to decide that. That's one of the things. Other people can say that about you. That's fine. And if they do, fantastic. If someone else describes you as a nice guy, that's a pretty good sign. If you describe you as a nice guy... Eh, that comes across badly. Now, I'm not saying that the kind of specific, literal definition of being a nice guy is bad. You know, the literal definition of, oh, they're nice, that's lovely. Okay, cool. We can do more. We can definitely do more. There is a phenomenally good article on Cracked, written by the then editor, I believe, Jack, and the article is called Six Harsh Truths That Will Make You a Better Person. And I reread that every year because... I need to remind myself of it as well. You know, motivation is just like food. You need to get it every single day. Motivation is like bathing. It doesn't matter if you have it one day. You've got to have it the next day as well. Motivation is not something that you just peek at and keep. Motivation is just like hunger, just like sleep. It comes and it goes and you've got to feed it. You've got to make sure you are motivated as often as you possibly can be. People think that motivated people are always motivated. No, not at all. You've got to do stuff that makes you there. So, let's uh, let's continue talking about nice guys and how you need more than this. Here's something that irritated me. If you are a really nice guy, like a really nice person, you treat people with a lot of respect, but you think that if you treat people nice enough, eventually they'll be attracted to you, that is not nice. That is just hoping that your being a basic human will reward you with another human's admiration. And people don't always admire that. A lot of people do like the idea of being nice. Okay, cool. What else you bring into the table? Because you're a nice guy, but that guy over there's a nice guy, and he plays guitar. I can't play guitar. So if someone turns up and they're like, oh, I'm really attracted to people who play guitar, they're going to go over to him. Now, what happens if I don't play guitar, that other dude does? Someone rocks up and they're like, oh, I want to find someone who plays guitar. That's what I'm attracted to specifically. But the dude that plays guitar is a bit of a dick. Are they going to say, oh, well, you know what, I really like that aspect, but I'm going to go with you instead because you're nice. No, no, sometimes people will go with the dickhead because they provide value in other areas of their life. That is a, a true thing. It's a true fact. Many people get into relationships because the value of those relationships is not specifically within the being nice bit. It's in the everything else that's there. 
People always go, oh, yeah, wh why, do, why do all the girls always just go and date the really fit guys? Because they value that aesthetic. Okay, well, what if the guys are dickheads? Okay, maybe they don't value that aesthetic as much as they do value the physical stuff. Oh, but I'm a nice guy. Okay, are you saying that your treatment of someone needs to completely override their personal desire for something else, even if you may see it as detrimental to them? Because if you believe that your treatment of someone is more important to someone else than their own personal preference, you don't want a partner, you want a slave. And that's not cool, and it's not going to last. Yes, in the chat, this is going to be a long clip. That is absolutely true. Yeah, my calves are pretty toned, is that something? Yeah, please, open... Bozy, open with that all the time. Whenever you go anywhere, just open with that. Yeah. Again, it does absolutely harken back to that kind of primal thing, and that's a great great way of putting it, harkening back to that ancestral primal desire to feel provided for. Different people, regardless of gender, are attracted to different things, and sometimes the elements that you have, as in being a nice person, is actually not considered an attractive trait by somebody else. You might consider it a healthy trait, which I would definitely say it is, but it's not necessarily always attractive. That's why people who are a little bit more dangerous, a little bit more bad boy, can be very sexy. That's why sometimes when I see a sign that says no loitering, I loiter. And people walk past and go, oh my god, look at that guy. He doesn't play by the rules. Sometimes when I used to work in a warehouse, there'd be a little yellow line drawn on the floor, dividing where the, the forklift and the foot traffic would go. And if there were no forklifts around, you know what I'd do? I'd walk on that line. Some of you in the chat went, you'd cross the line. God, no! Not a madman! Alright? I'm a bad boy. I'm not insane. I'm not suicidal. I'm just a little bit dangerous. That's the difference. That's what I do. Hmm. Did I also take extra napkins from the rest stops and restaurants? I don't take any napkins, alright? I live by the edge. I live on the edge all the time. I eat saucy sandwiches. And if that sauce drips on my white shirt, I live with that. That's a mistake I've made. I don't put a napkin on. When I was painting the set for the Dungeons & Dragons place, black paint, I wore a white shirt. That's the definition of bravery right there. Straight up. Straight up brave. All right, now everyone is ridiculously, you know, turned on by all those stories. Let's play some old school RuneScape, turn everyone off again. It's that roller coaster. It's that peak and trough. Up and down. You know, you get people all worked up with stories of what a badass you were, then you're like, right guys, let's go back to Giant's Foundry. Okay, cool. Let's uh, pour the metal from the crucible into the mold and then take out the thing. Then we do the stuff. Pour the crucible. Can do. Where can we find a partner that bra that brave and badass? Annie, unfortunately, we are a rare breed. Hanging around, no loitering signs. You've got to be quick, though, because obviously if we stay there too long, we get arrested. Because that's the point of the sign. It just, it, it genuinely gets to me because so, you must free your hands. So many, so many young guys. Oh, okay, I'm holding this. Uh, where do I take it now? Kovac, I've got it. Where do I go? I've got this huge burning sword, Kovac. It's literally burning through my hands. What do I do? Uh, hammer. Okay, cool. Use the hammer on the giant sword. A uh, big fan of YouTube videos, mate. Also play a lot of D&D. Now, what's my opinion about the new D&D movie? I was so sad when I saw it. Did you not like it? I, I enjoyed it. I did genuinely enjoy it. So, we have to use the trip hammer. Your attempt to overwork... Your attempt to overwork the preform causes you to miss the action altogether. Okay. Oh, do we have to time this or something? I'm assuming there's a timing thing to it. You don't. Okay. So, do I need to just wait and then put it on here or something? There's a random timing event for bonus progress. Because I'm being told that I'm failing it every time. Uh, wait and keep it in the right colored bar. Okay. All oh, right. So, I just stand here and then it hits that. 
Do I need to go and heat it in the lava again? Ah, right, so that's the heat. Oh, this is just the thing from yeah, I get it. Okay, that's just the heat from there. So, does the heat need to be in the green? Is green good for the heat? Stop. What did I do wrong? You're damaging the preform. How? The sword is too cold. Okay, cool, so keep it hot. Gotcha. Dunk it. It needs to stay hot. Thank you. Because it's weird, because green, I'm guessing, is good, and red is bad. That's kind of what I've always been taught, as far as, you know, traffic lights go. Match the colors red to red, yellow to yellow. Got it. Got it. It's all right, lads. We're on it now. I know what I'm doing. This is the high-level RuneScape gameplay you all turn up for. I all know that you want this. This is exactly what you wanted more of. All right, now we've done the hammering. We move on to the cool in the waterfall. All right, so we cool this off to get it to there. And once it's cooled off, we take it to the grindstone, and then we polish it. All right, I'm learning. I'm learning slowly. Ah, okay, but as you grind it, it gets hotter again. I see. So you grind in, it gets hot, then you go back to there. I'm learning. I'm learning. You just can't take that too low. Otherwise, you make it... Yeah, okay, cool. Let me go to there again. Just about to start working on my D&D campaign. But no, I very much enjoyed the, um... What game is next for the worst MMO series? I genuinely don't know. Oh, I'll tell you one interesting fact, though. I've always wanted to, for a long time now, make a really detailed, interesting, in-depth video about the history of MMOs. And one, obviously the biggest one, is World of Warcraft. So I really wanted to make a, a World of Warcraft documentary, almost like how Warcraft conquered the world, a full in-depth review of the the very first Warcraft game, the real-time strategy, Orcs versus Humans, and then Tides of Darkness, and all that stuff. But... In order to do that, I would very much need to talk to someone involved in the process of making Warcraft. And thankfully, I think I've been able to reach out to someone pretty influential within the process of making World of Warcraft, and they've agreed to give me a bit of their time. So that's pretty cool. I can't say exactly when that will be happening because I don't know myself, but when it is happening, I'll let you know. I will let you know. I did start the uh, the history series, but I didn't, it didn't go as well as I wanted it to go. So I've got a lot more that I want to do. All right. So I'm, do we do we keep performing this down and then? Oh, so you've got it. It's got to be in the green for the polishing wheel. I see. Right. Kuro says, "What's going on with all the people here?" Should someone tell him? Someone let him know that we're being lazy. See, here's a question for you as well. Have you guys noticed that when I am... Um, oh, so it actually reduces the heat quite substantially to polish the sword. Am I going to need to increase it again? Stop! What did I do? You're damaging the preform. It's too cold. Heat it up. All right, cool. Put it back on there. He's supposed to be lazy, but he's grown autonomous. Now, have any of you noticed that since actually having to focus on the game, as in, like, now... You know what, that's a good point. Myth, walk me back over to the polishing wheel, please. Since focusing on the game instead of on the chat and the, the rants, it's not as interesting. Like, it's... Twitch is very, very little about the game. Twitch is very much about the entertainment value focused when the game is kind of background noise. So I try as hard as I can to just let the game be background noise, but it's difficult to do that when it's like an active mini-game that I've really got to focus on. Myth, please walk me back over to the hot bit. They they are my caretakers, I appreciate that. Depends on the game. If I wanted to see a video game, I'd watch a long play. Yeah, that's very true. Completely agree. 100% spot on. If you wanted just to watch a video game, you'd watch someone play the video game. I'm here to talk to all of you and rant. You're using more clicks to follow him than just clicking yourself. Look, it's not about making things easy. It's about sending a message that I'm lazy. That's what it is. It's not just about doing things the easiest or most efficient way. It's about using you to do them. That's what it's about. Yo, Kovac, I've got a sword here for you, mate. Finish the sword. Can you use the swords? It'd be kind of cool if you could. Right, he analyzes my work, and this is definitely a sword. Thanks, Kovac. I'm really glad we're on the same team with that. Uh, did you know that the YouTuber Josh Drive Says doesn't like you? I don't like him either. I mean, that dude has just been saying so much dumb shit for years. 
I can't believe he's got a, a channel. A third channel, if you will. Ridiculous. You can unlock a large sword through the foundry. You can buy one with points. Okay, cool. Gotcha. No, I don't like him either. Okay, cool. Kovac, I very much appreciate the fact we've completed the Sleeping Giants and we did it together. 6,000 smithing experience. Oh, sweet. I'm guessing that's going to give me a couple of smithing levels. Fantastic. Smithing level 33 and I've done nothing. Appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. Only Trails is still here with us. Only Trails, by the way, guys, one of the most entertaining RuneScape uh, Twitch streamers. Are you still just doing Treasure Trails? Have you not got everything from a Treasure Trail yet? Are there still things you haven't got? It's ridiculous that there are still things you haven't got. No, Trails is a good lad. Enjoy. Okay, Jagex Elena's here as well. Fantastic. Hey, hey, Elena. How are you doing? Oh, Elena, if I... In fact, if I, yeah, if I get involved in, like, an instance, I might need you to jump in and save me at some point, because, again, I'm too lazy to do too much work. If you could kill Elvark for me, that'd be great. Right, where are we going next? We've done the Giant's Foundry. Let's have a quick look at the ideal sleeping giants. The next thing we have to do is train fletching from 1 to 10. That's what it actually says in the quest list. Train fletching from 1 to 10. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to use a tab to teleport to Varrock. I then require logs, arrowheads, and feathers. That's that's the plan. Uh, first of all, Dar, could you please walk me to the bank? Dar, please. Oh, fantastic. Apocalypse is with us as well. Dar, please walk me to the bank. Uh, I came to voice my disappointment about Josh quitting Guild Wars 1 forever. Bad decision. Yes, it's true. It's true. Don't tell anyone else that's what's happened. Right, so I'm going to use the bank booth, and I'm going to deposit everything, apart from my sword, which is very important to me. And I was going to not deposit my shield. Where is the... There we go. Cabbage shield. Fantastic. Okay, right. I need to train Fletching from 1 to 10. However, I don't want to do anything. So, Ket, thank you for trading with me. Accept the trade. We're going to need some logs, a knife, a fantastic headless arrows, bronze arrow tips, weapon poison, cup of tea. That'll do. I'll accept that. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Sorted. Uh, use headless arrows or bronze arrows. Make 10. Go. All right, sweet. Cool. We've got training done. This is fine. This is exactly what we need more of. So for those of you just joining in, being like, hang on, why are you being so lazy? This is lazy man mode. I'm going to do as little as possible. Basically, if I can outsource the work to you, I will. That's all I'm going to do. Josh gets older, becomes a silver fox. Thank you, that is my plan. You're like the opposite. I've never leveled a mage in any MMO. Oh, I love mages. This week I finished one reaction video of you where you play Dragon Age all the time. We're like half... Oh, the, yeah, we played a lot of reaction videos. The one that was like four hours long, the loop. Oh, the loop reaction video. At some point, I'm just going to react to my own content. That's going to be the plan. We can now make bronze javelins. Yeah, sounds like a lot of effort. So, yeah, the reason I've gone with lazy man mode is because I just really don't want to challenge myself in any real way, but I do want to challenge you. Like, I want to be a... I've got to the point now where I can just be a nuisance more than a help. And I'm fully embracing the streamer, the streamer life. My first time joining... Rayoku, good evening to you. Hopefully you're doing well. Thank you for joining us in the game. Do I have a main account too? I do. I do, but the thing is my main account requires me to focus and put a lot of effort in. This account doesn't. Who's going to walk him on his farming runs? You all are all of you. Uh, now, I have actually thought about how I'm going to do farming, and I'll probably have to do some bits of farming off-stream. Not much. Some bits. Oh, by the way, I appreciate the fact you're giving me weapon poison and tea. So thank you for that. That's remarkably kind of you. Was there a reason that we got the, the weapon poison? Is the weapon poison required for something? Welcome to RuneScape. Thank you very much, Meek. I have been involved in the RuneScape community for some time, but I still do think it's one of the best MMO communities out there. It's definitely... It's definitely one of the most self-aware. I value that. Like, there's a lot of people, and people take RuneScape... 
people take their MMO very, very seriously. I think RuneScape, especially old school, the community kind of collectively get that we're all playing a 20-year-old medieval children's clicker game, and no one's particularly bothered about kind of being insulted for that. They're like, yeah, no, I get it. I totally get it. Good thing I don't play old school RuneScape and just watch people being used. It's the best way to do it. I value being able to vote on updates with a 70% pass rate. Yes. Yes. Now, I very much feel that that whole poll update system is a big risk. Because, like, what if it doesn't go the way you want it to go? Do you just throw away an update? And apparently the answer is, yeah, they do just do that. But I really do genuinely hope sailing passes. Not just for the memes, but because I like RuneScape, and I want more content to be in the game. And sailing looks like it's got a huge amount of potential. And when people say, oh, it's not going to be fully fleshed out, yeah, I know. The same way that fire making wasn't fully fleshed out. The same way that prayer was changed from evil and good prayers to something else entirely. The same way that magic has changed over the years. The same way that hunter and runecrafting has changed. What I'm looking at is the potential that a skill has over the long term. And I genuinely believe that the, um, the sailing skill has a huge amount of potential over the long term. It might release bad, but releasing something bad and then fixing it? Best way to do it. Ket, thank you. I'll trade with you again. What are we trading for? My next quest, by the way, is the tourist trap. Bronze pickaxe, needle, thread, leather, elemental shield, coal, hammer, and a ring of wealth. What? I mean, I'll accept everything. Thank you very much. So I'm guessing when I use the ring of wealth scroll on the ring of wealth, does that do a thing? I'm going to guess that does a thing. So let's just uh, myth, what are we trading as well? I'm not sure what the tourist trap quest needs specifically, but I'm guessing water skins if we're going to the desert. Uh, Elena says, thank you, that means a lot. No, honestly, I think Jaggets are one of the better uh, design crews out there, by the way. And not to throw any kind of shade at Blizzard, but I did go to the Jagex offices recently. I checked their fridge. Not a drop of breast milk. Not even there. It's like they aren't even trying, honestly. Right, let's get back. <laughs> Ooh, that clip's gonna come back to haunt me. <laughs> okay, let's accept this. I can't, can I accept all of this? I think I've not got quite enough space. Oh no, I've got exactly enough space. Exactly. I'm <laughs> I guarantee that Elena's laughing right now, but she can't type. You know, that would be like a, that would be dangerous for her to say that, but I'm really glad. Right, Ryuka wants to teleport me to Lumbridge. Let's do this. Off to Lumbridge we go. Biggest question, would you have used it for tea? And that's too valuable for that. Right, what are we doing now? We are putting on deserts, deserts, and deserts. We've got everything else. And uh, Darcy, we need to get a tourist trap. Where does tourist trap begin? Let's have a quick check. Uh, we are going to... Tourist trap is starts... Oh, we need 20 smithing, 10 fletching. That's fine. Desert clothing, we need bronze bars. Already got them. Hammer feathers, got them as well. Means to enter the desert. Yeah, I can just pay and get through here, I think. I'll just wait and then open the gate. Fantastic. Darcy, I'm following you again. What world am I on? Uh, what world are we on, guys? I'm currently on world... That's a good question. 342. 342. The Fellowship of the Ring is going on the quest. This is very much some kind of adventure fellowship. I really hope that when this account gets the quest cape, we can all celebrate this together. I will do something related to Jagex to, to celebrate this. Elena says, fine, I'll get my Twitch account so I can laugh at things. Thank you, Elena. We need, I need to, you know, give you plausible deniability that you're not involved in any of these jokes. Uh, Apocalypse wish to trade with me. Whatever we are trading, I appreciate. I've got 10 shanty passes already, so we'll just go straight through. Uh, yeah, proceed regardless. And we've got some water skins and a Camelot teleport. Hi, Darcy, where are we going to? I'm following you. Wherever you're going, I'm following you as well. We've got the knife. Do we have the knife on us to cut? Oh, this is it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Irina, we are, in fact, right here. We start right now. How am I going to deal with combat stuff? I'm just going to complain a lot, to be honest. It's most of the place. Irina seems very upset and cries as you approach her. <laughs> oh, man. If I had a pound for every time that happened, I'd have two pounds. Which isn't a lot. It's strange it happened twice. Boohoo! Oh dear! My only daughter! If you're new to the stream and thinking, is Josh going to act the entire quest? Yes. Yes, we are. 
cheer up. Might never happen. <laughs> you know, what a British way of saying it. First of all, here's one thing I said. If you see someone in real life looking sad, don't tell them to cheer up. You have no idea what's happened in their day. Don't tell them to just smile. It might never happen. Don't say, oh, you'd look a lot better if you smiled. Don't be like, oh, why are you so grumpy? The worst thing might have happened. The last thing that they need is some random stranger telling them to be happy. I mean, I've asked some of my, uh, my female friends what the worst thing guys say constantly is, and it's always, smile. You should smile more. Shut up. Let people be sad. It's okay if they want to be sad. It's okay if people don't want to smile. You try just being happy. Yeah. It's, it's that easy. It's that easy. There we go. I very much dislike it. Someone said, Josh, you should smile more. How dare. How dare you. Okay, cool. What's the matter? I'm here to help. <laughs> oh dear, my daughter, Anna, has gone missing in the desert. I fear that she is lost. Or perhaps... <laughs> even worse expelled when did she go into the desert she went in there a few days ago she said she would be back yesterday and she's not should we start the tourist trap quest yes we shall i'll find her for you not a problem oh thank you you've made me a very happy mother if i had a pound every time that was said to me okay i hope it's not too late do you have any ideas where she might have gone I did go looking for her myself. I came across some footprints a little way south. I'm worried that they lead to the desert mining camp. You should tell him to smile more. Mike is yeah, smile more. I'll get your daughter back, mate. Finish the sentence, Josh. No. No, you can't make me. Okay, cool. So where are we going now? We need to go to talk to Thingy, talk to the mercenary captain outside of the desert mining camp. When he attacks you, kill him. For when he attacks me... I've got no defense. I've got no armor. I need a weapon. Yeah, I've, I need food. Hang on. I'm not doing this without food. Could somebody bring me some food, please? Just one. It's fine. Just like one shark or something. You've got food. All right, trade. I'll, uh, I'll trade with you. Var, if you've got food. Oh, fantastic. Thanks very much. We are your DoorDash, yes. So what I'm using right now is basically OSRS DoorDash. Uber Eats, that's what we're using right now. We're going to die from dehydration. We are Kokoi, lead the way. Run south, please, Kokoi. Here we go. I mean, Kokoi, Darcy seems to have taken the lead on this, so I'm going to trust Darcy more. But if you zoom out, the desert's pretty big, to be fair. Thank you for the stream and good night. You're more than welcome. Have a great night. Take care of yourself. That's going to do tourist. Oh, that is a beautiful Max Cape right there, Brady. That is a lovely looking cape. I've got to admit, the Max Cape is sexy. Oh, I seem to be taking some level of damage. I'm assuming it was from a camel biting me. Yes, it was. Okay, talk to mercenary captain. Uh, no, hang on. Mercenary captain, talk to. There we go. You approach the mercenary captain. <gasps> a real captain! Okay, so I might need you guys to uh, help me out in a second. I'd love to work for a tough guy like you. What can you do? Uh, can't I do something for a strong captain like you? The captain ponders a moment, then looks at you critically. You could bring me the head of Al-Zababasim. He is the leader of the notorious desert bandits. They plague us daily. You should find them west of here. You should have no problem in finishing them all off. Do this for me, and maybe I will consider helping you. I don't think I can do that. That's mean and cruel and nasty. Be off with you, then. It's a funny captain who can't fight his own battles. All right, so I'm ca I'm combat level 40. He's 47. All right, cool. We got this. Right, let's do this. The guards gather to watch the fight. Attack the mercenary captain. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in very, very low armor here, and I've got two shark. So I might need one of you guys to, like, drop some shark in a second, and maybe... Maybe I'll pick it up in a second, but we're doing okay. Oh, hang on. We've got a special attack with Excalibur. I've used the four Camelot special attack, which increases my defense, I believe. Thrilling RuneScape combat right here, guys. This is what people want. Drop some shark you have. I'll see it in a second. Hang on. Attack the mercenary captain. I'm using my Slash attack, which is the strongest of the Excalibur's attacks. 
As soon as the shark appears on the floor, I will grab it. I've got one more shark. I should just about survive this. Want to fight, do you? Yeah, there we go. Wreck these mercenaries. Not, uh... Not doing great, not gonna lie. Maybe the, uh, the elemental shield's actually a lot worse than the other shield. Where was the shark dropped? That's the... I can see bones. I cannot see anything else. I'm going to need to see some shark in a minute. Or I'm going to need to trade someone. So I'll uh, attack the mercenary captain again. Right, I've eaten my two bits of food. Oh, there they are. Sweet. Hang on. Let me grab these. Thank you. I do very much appreciate the fact that we are just doing, like, DoorDash, Uber Eats style, old school RuneScape. This is the laziest we can possibly play. Thrilling stuff. This is why people play a children's medieval clicker game from 20 years ago. Behold! Combat. Look, it is true. If I was going to make a worst demo ever on RuneScape, I cannot defend the combat. It's not about the combat, though. How do we become your OSRS friend? Look, Brady, the real friends? No. I was going to say that the real friends were the friends we made along the way. No, you know what? I've committed to it. Brady, the real friends were the friends we made along the way. And you are my friend now. We are friends. I have added you. It's okay. Let's just continue eating a shark in a second. There's another shark on the floor. That's great. Oh, the, the yeah, the early... The early game combat sucks, without a doubt. Right. The mercenary captain drops a key. It falls to the floor. Eat the shark. Grab the metal key. Okay, cool. We've got the metal key. Now we go into the gate. In we pop. Hey, you with the weapons and armor. You're not allowed in here. Oh, okay, cool. Unequip all combat gear. Right. Let's... Yeah, that's going to be difficult. Oh, okay, cool. That's going to be a problem. We've been thrown in the thing. Okay, let's just use my massive strength to bend the cell window and get out. Yeah, we uh, we may need to unequip. Remove it. I can't remove Excalibur. I've got to drop these desert robes because I've already got desert robes on. So the desert robes are being dropped. Armor and weapons are being removed. I think that's all of my... No, that can be removed as well. Is that everything? Escape cell window. You prepare to squeeze through. You need an extra pair of robes for the quest. Ah, oh, damn it. Hang on. Let me squeeze back in. Let me grab the desert shirt. What don't I need? Oh, God. I've got to drop something. Needle. I don't need the needle? Darcy, hang on. Darcy, I need you to take some of these things from me. Darcy, you're going to be a... um. I've got to trade with you for the time being. Darcy is an Iron Man. He stands alone. God damn it, Darcy. Ah, oh, non trady man. Can I just drop my shorts in the prison cell? That is not a sentence I thought I'd ever have to say. But desperate times call for desperate measures. I might need to drop my shorts in the prison cell. Drop shorts. It's all right, guys. It's for the greater good. The greater good. It does sound dangerous. It does sound dangerous. That's true. Oh, okay, cool. If I drop the... No clue how to get over there. Can I just open the prison door and leave? You can't. I need the desert boots. Oh, no. What if I put the Amulet of Glory on the... Wear the Ring of Wealth? No. Hang on. Yeah, the wealth is way more important than the Ring of Life. So we can drop the Ring of Life and grab the Desert Boots. Okay, cool. We're good now. We're good. We've got everything we need. We're okay. Now we escape. We go up here. I'm following the, uh, the instructions of where to go. It's okay. Ratio, hello to you. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're having a lovely day. Alright, so climb up the cliff again. Right. I am kind of double checking exactly where it needs me to go now I've got everything. And we go back down the cliff. Where are we on like the the process? Unequip all combat gear, talk to the male slave to the east. Right, so is that all my combat gear effectively unequipped? I think that's all the combat gear unequipped. Do you get desert boots after the main course boots? Yes, you do. You get dessert. We're at a point we shouldn't have reached. Right. Okay, we'll go back in the gate. It's fine. We'll go back in the gate. Everything's okay. They're not going to shout at me. See? They're not going to shout. 
beautiful stuff. Hey, you with the armor. Ah, that's Darcy. That's not me. Right, who am I talking to now? I'm talking to this dude over here. Male slave. Male slave. How long have you been here? Oh, I've just arrived, actually. Just arrived, my friend. Brand new, here for the holiday camp. It's a shame I won't be around for long to get to know you. I'm making a break for it today. Excellent. Good for you. Let's let's escape together. Have you seen this girl? She She's probably in some kind of barrel. I don't know. I'll let me undo the chains for you, mate. There we go. I do. Yeah, I actually want the shirt from your back, mate. Give me... Give me your clothes. I want your clothes. Take them off. I've already dropped my shorts in the prison cell. You take them off right now. Let's give it a go. You use some nearby bits of wood and wire to try to get the clothes off. Fantastic. We have managed to pick it. Why don't they just unionize? They, they really should do. They, why don't they just unionize? We've used some wood. We've got the clothes. We are trading ours for theirs. Equip the slave robes. All right. Ah, oh, beautiful. We've got the smelly, flea-encrusted robes. This is the Gamer Funk right there. Natural 100% Gamer Funk. It's true. And enter the mine door northeast of the camp. Thank God for Quest Helper. Can you imagine paying attention? Imagine reading quests. Imagine. All right, cool. So we're now uh, in the, the miney bit. What the hell? Open the... Hang on, mine door entrance. The guard searches you thoroughly as you go through the gate. So if I open the mine door entrance now, am I... Why? Why? What? Hang on. Oh, there... You're not allowed in there. Right. What do we have that I shouldn't have? What have I... <laughs> Thank God for Quest Helper. I'm clearly doing something wrong. Unequip all combat gear. Talk to the male slave. Trade your desert robes for his slave robes. Yep, wearing slave robes. Equip the slave robes and enter. I'm guessing you have to unequip everything else. Ten people aren't supposed to click on the door at once. That might be... Is it I have to unequip everything else? Ah, uh, Darcy, you were... Uh, can I trade with you? God damn it. Brady, you an Iron Man? Thank God. Brady, can I leave some stuff with you for a second, mate? I need uh, you to just hold some things for me. Just, yeah, wreck that dude with the, uh, with whatever bow you're using. But if I can just, it's fine, hang on. We'll just, you, you kill that guy, it's fine. Brady, could you please hold for a second this water skin, this amulet of glory, and that cabbage shield? That'd be great. If you just hold on to those for a second, uh... That's good. That's absolutely fine. I've got no space, so we'll just take these, and that allows me to unequip everything else. Just click on the door is bugged. Is that it? Is that what it is? Is it... Where's my hair gone? Why do I not have any hair once I took off the... Th That's not what the hair should look like. Let's put the fedora back on. Cover up that mess. Okay, cool. We're here now. And the parrot... That's still there, obviously. Cool, here we go. Oh, it was just... There actually wasn't a problem. There was just an absolute ton of... Uh, too many people were clicking on the door at once. Is that what it was? Yeah. That would be a sign of age. Uh, yes, I am old. I, I understand. I agree. I'm guessing it was just because there were too many people clicking on the door at once. I'm guessing this quest never thought that, like, ten people would attempt to complete it at exactly the same time. Yeah. Okay, talk to God. Hey, God, how's it going? What do you want? Just like to mine in a different area, really. Just kind of bored, to be honest. Different place. To mine somewhere new, you know. Change is as good as a rest, as they say. Yep, sir, you are quite right, sir. Of course I'm right. It goes around, comes around, as they say. It's been ages since I've anything different to eat. Would you like something different to eat, my friend? Okay, we understand each other perfectly, mate. What do you want? I prefer my pineapples whole, not chopped up. All right, the guard moves and winks at you. I see, so we now need... Talk to the dude in the better bin camp. Oh, we've got to get like a really specific pineapple, haven't we? Okay. 
Ah, I see. That door, like many things, was not programmed to be pounded by 50 people. That is a very specific skill that not a lot of people have. Eh? Sometimes you've got to go one at a time. Here we go. <laughs> I'm good point. I'm walking on my own. What the hell? Myth. Take me to the door, not the door. Don't read into that. Did that. To the door. Not. I mean, we'll discuss what happens after the quest, after the quest. But for the time being, just take me to the door. <laughs> it's like, I can do both. You know? We can multitask over here. Not a problem at all. All right, cool. Here we go. Kitty Cat wishes to trade with me. Kitty Cat, what are we trading? I'll happily accept a trade. What are we trading? We are trading... <laughs> I love it when people give me stamina potions because it's a very polite way of saying, hurry up. Like, please, go faster. You're too slow... Stop it. Be quicker. Didn't know I was so into doors. Well, you know. Let's just open this mine door if we can. Sir, please collect your soiled clothes. No, no, I'll wear what I want to wear. It's fine. Through we go. Okay, cool. Now we can run off. Uh, Brady, I'll follow you. Brady, uh, I deliver hope wishes to trade. I'll accept that trade in a second. Brady, if you could uh, take us to the... The gate, please. That'd be terrific. Am I always quick? Look, okay, sometimes you've got to save time. Sometimes you've got to be there quickly. It's totally okay. What, they're, they're telling me that a slave's escaping. Hang on. Into the cells you go. All right, cool, guys. Hang on, I've been uh, thrown in the cell again. I witnessed an illegal left click. Look, the, the self-imposed limitation of absolutely no left clicks, of course, has to at some point be pushed away. It's true. It does. Also, I'm fully aware that this is not a, a cup of tea. This is a massive jug of water because it is really warm over here in the UK. Stay hydrated. This is actually a regular sized bottle. I'm just really small. Looks cloudy. Lemon flavor. Why is the water not transparent? I've added some lemon flavor to it. Because I'm posh like that. Can't just be, you know, drinking regular water. A terrible thing. Brady, could you please walk to the west and take us to the Bedabin camp? That would be terrific. Is it lemon barley water? It's not. It's just regular lemon water. Thanks, but look at this. This is a group of people all together doing like a 15-year-old quest. And I'm doing as little as possible. This is terrific. This is great. This is what RuneScape was meant to be. This is what Andrew Gower truly intended. Let's just uh, stick some stuff on. Hang on, Brady. Follow you there. Cave Johnson has something to say about lemons. Make life take the lemons back. I don't want your damn lemons. What am I supposed to do with these? Okay, cool. Better bin camp. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Equip that may as well. Yo, talk to Al Shabim. Hey, dude, how's it going? Uh, I need a pineapple. Oh, man. The RuneScape really just gets me. You know, who hasn't been sent to a nomadic desert camp before to collect a pineapple? We've all been there. Relatable. Very relatable. That's what it is. Josh playing OSRS is like a bot with extra chat options. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. This, this is like really complicated botting. Um... The nomads sell water skins. Now nah, I've got three. It's fine. I'm not going to die. Um, das, Coco, could you please run all the way back over? Unequip all combat gear and re-enter the camp. Cool. Darcy, could you please take us back over to the camp? I believe. Hang on. Climb up. Oh, hang on. Climb up the ladder in the building. Is that the next thing? Search the southwest bookcase. Talk to Captain. Oh, right. Got you. I see. That gets that. Then you go back. and the, it, There's a lot of back and forth in this one. I do heavily relate to buying up bot strife haze. Yes. If you've seen the Sapuga video on the OSRS chat GPT bots, I have not. Thoughts on an in-universe method of telling someone where there's a bot, like a reveal tulpa spell. Oh, no, I used to actually have this. So I used to be a player moderator back in the day. I was, uh, I was a P-mod, if you will, with one of the silver crowns. And what that meant was my chat would still be visible to people even if they had chat off. You have to specifically ignore 
AP mod in order to have their chat blocked from you. So what I would do is I would walk in into the green dragons that were heavily, heavily botted, uh, and I would type out loud, you are horribly burnt by the dragon fire, and many people would just immediately teleport away before they've even been able to do that. And that was simply because what the, the script they were running was effectively looking for was you know, our, our specific text commands there. So yeah, by saying you are horribly burnt by the dragon fire, they, uh, they would uh, teleport away, which I thought was great. Okay, cool, we've got the thing now. Now we go upstairs and this thing just here. Cool. P mod. Yes, that's what it was. Uh, what else? I also had a RuneFest flagstaff of festivities. I still have this in RuneScape 3. One of the, the rarest items in the game, in fact. And if you... You can stick a flagstaff in the floor, which tells everyone that you went to the very first RuneFest ever. And the flagstaff can't be removed except by you. So if you have bots that click on very specific places of the screen, even if they're taught to ignore certain items, if you stick the flagstaff down and they click on it, they will open a window on their screen which gets caught into a loop. So you can use the flagstaff of festivities extremely easily to cause uh, many, many loops. Right, I need to search the bookshelf, but I, I'm going to drop this pickaxe. So, Brady, can you also take this pickaxe off me, please? Yes. Oh dear, you are dead. That also does stop a lot of bots. That's true. Just the basic things. The basic... I'm going to give some coal as well. The basic things stops a lot of stuff. Yeah. Kind of wish something cool could be done with unarmed. Yeah, like a full-on unarmed skill. Like the when we tried to complete Oblivion using just punching and we fisted our way through Oblivion. Good times. Good times. Search the bookcase. Uh, you notice several books on the subject of... You notice several books on the subject of sailing. Elena, if you're in the chat still, this has to be some kind of Easter egg. When the sailing skill comes out, if it comes out, please have people come back to here and find a specific book about sailing. Please. They've planned it all along. Oh, man, they, they knew. They knew for years and years and years that's what they would have. Talk to Captain Siard about sailing to distract him. Hey, Cap Captain, ignore this mass of people in your room, please, and just focus entirely on me. You know, ignore them. Look at me. Hey, uh, want to have a chat? Want to have a chat? I'm at this. I do indeed. Is your main maxed? No, it's not. Uh, I've got max combat. I've got max uh, attack, strength, defense, prayer, range, magic, summoning, that kind of stuff. But I don't have many skills that were maxed. I think I've got fletching and hit points and stuff like that. But no, I never got uh, too many of the skills maxed. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I maxed out summoning. And I got to 95 dungeoneering. I actually really liked dungeoneering. But yeah, no, I got, um, I got max combat because I wanted to do God Wars repeatedly. And that was good fun. Right. Yo, you have a, oh, you have a lot of books, mate. So many books. Tell me about all your books. You're interested in uh, sailing, you say? Yeah. Oh, the captain it, Captain perks up. He does. His mast is now full. Yeah, I can tell by the cut of your jib, my friends. The, the, your jib is, is cut in such a way that I think you are a sailor. While, while distracted, clearly by me and not by this room full of people doing emotes, I'm going to steal the plans from your thing and now we return to Al Shabim. Okay guys, could we uh, please head back to the place? Darcy, I'm going to follow you you can take me there I believe Jib is his face yeah. What's a book I've read recently that I would recommend? So take off Slace Slave. Uh, I see, cool take off Slave stuff or get arrested again gotcha. Okay, cool so the slave stuff has been removed and I can go through the gate. So I'm going to be like really basic and say that I read uh, Atomic Habits because I saw that YouTube video that everyone else saw about Atomic Habits. And of course, obviously, I want to be followed. Ryuku, I'm following you now. Of course, I saw that video about Atomic Habits that everyone else saw and I, I read it and it was a pretty good book. Apart from that... Oh, I'm not someone that doesn't read, obviously. Reading is great. But unfortunately, I don't have a hell of a lot of free time to sit down 
and just thumb through a book. It's difficult for me to find a lot of time to be able to read as much as I would like to. I say that I mostly read too much Reddit or watch too many uh, long YouTube videos. Like earlier, I watched that YouTube video of a guy making a perfectly pure cookie. Did anyone else watch the perfectly pure cookie video? We should have definitely watched the perfectly pure cookie video. Thank you. See, we all saw the perfectly pure cookie video. You know what I love? I genuinely love this is... Okay, so I'm going to go back a bit in a couple of years now. If you were a 90s kid or a late 80s kid or something like that, I mean, 70s as well if you want to, even the early 2000s, we didn't have a hell of a lot of TV channels. There wasn't a lot of choice about what to watch on TV. You don't have a massive amount of cable and internet and Netflix and stuff. So we had physical actual magazines of when TV shows were on. You'd have to be there at 7 o'clock, sat down in front of the TV, and you would shout to someone, you know, it's on. They'd be like, oh, I'm going to go and run quickly to the toilet really quickly and be like, no, it's on. The show's on right now. And we'd all sit down to watch it. Simpsons at 6 o'clock. Um, some was it uh, Hercules and Xena at 7 o'clock after that. Things on at 8. You'd all sit down and watch it. What we have lost with the... <laughs> everyone in the game's like, yeah, it'll be some time. It's, you've lost me for a bit. It's okay. I'll make this one quick. What we lost when we moved away from set time TV into on-demand TV and Netflix and YouTube. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we've lost this, but we lost that sense of community that everyone experienced something at the same time. There is a lovely, there's a beauty, there's a magnificence in the collective experience of an event at the same time. It's like going to the cinema. It's like it's why I premiere my videos on YouTube. There is a beautiful camaraderie, a community, if you will, of everyone experiencing something together. And when TV moved to being on demand, we lost that for everyone sitting down at seven o'clock. Remember when Game of Thrones was like the biggest thing in the world forever, and people would actively wait for the next episode to be released. And then you'd come into work or school or college or friendship groups or wherever you were, you'd be like, oh my god. Did you see Game of Thrones? Everyone talks about it as soon as it releases. I suppose live sports are still doing this in a way. What I love about YouTube, especially when the trending stuff happens for good videos, not trending crap videos, is you say, oh my god, did you see this? And people are like, oh my god, yes, I did. Everyone saw that. As soon as a new video comes out, everyone sees that. I mean, I chat to people, oh, did you see the new Summoning Salt video? Did you see the new video from this person, from that person, from the other? Did you see this... What was it was I watched uh, there's been a new skip discovered in Final Fantasy X. So of course I watched all the way through that. There was uh, another video made by uh, Dan Olson, the same guy that made um, Line Go Up. He made about the, the metaverse is a dead mall, all that kind of stuff. What I very much love is when there is an event show, almost like this is like Eurovision. You know, Eurovision is again, it's silly, but Everyone sits down and watches it together, and everyone has, like, Eurovision party. Yes, on-demand content is fantastic for consuming the content whenever you want to consume it, but what a lot of people forget, and this is my absolute area of expertise, this is my area of study for years and years and years, it's not just the content that matters. It's the community experience of the content. It doesn't... You don't just judge off the art itself. You can sometimes have a greater experience by taking into account the entire event that you're involved in around the art. And this entire study, this area of studying the human experience of the event, that's called phenomenology. And that was my entire focus for uni, and I still think it's very important. Why? Why are, we all sit Why are we all playing RuneScape right now? Why are we all just talking about this crap stuff? <laughs> good point. It, there is a, it's a good point there's no desert heat in here, otherwise we would all be dead. Okay, sorry. I'll get back to playing the game. I know a lot of you have given your time up to make sure we can be here. <laughs> what did you say? The man's just reading something to us. All right, cool. So tell me about stuff. Yeah. Uh, we could experience the quest at the same time. Man's just reading us his bachelor's thesis. I can do that. I can get that for you. It's not a problem. Okay. But how can you have a community experience watching a movie if nobody talks to each other while watching the movie? Have you ever found that you laugh at comedy more when you're watching comedy with someone that you like? 
who also likes that comedy? You ever sat down to watch a Netflix special or watch your favourite comedian and you just play it on and they, they say something really funny and you're just like... <laughs> you do that on exhale from your nose. You, intima you, you imitate a bull, just briefly. But then you get your mates around, you sit there, you watch it all together. Don't teleport me to Camelot. Why are we going to Camelot? We don't need to go to Camelot yet, Ryuku. I know that you're bored. Okay, sorry. We'll go north. Myth, I'll follow you. Right, <laughs> Ryuk's like, do the quest, Josh, or I will teleport you to Camelot right now. But don't you find that when you're experiencing an action movie or a comedy movie, you appreciate it more when you're watching it with people? There's, there is a love and appreciation to be found within a collective experience of something. You laugh much, much more when you're watching something you found funny with other people and it's true yeah people laugh at different parts you laugh so much it's like i um i sat you know if you show someone something on your phone that you find really funny and they watch it stony face and they're like yeah that's hilarious i'm like well could you let me know could you laugh maybe at it Ah, oh, that's why I've added Josh's videos to the curriculum instead of watching them. Good, you should do. Every classroom ever should be forced to watch all of my videos ever. I watch too many of your videos. The Is It Any Good series is good. Keep it up. Thank you. I have actually just finished rendering, just before this thing happened, the next episode of Was It Any Good. It's an old SNES game called Chrono Trigger. All right, cool. Use an experimental anvil to forge items. Use the metal. Oh, in interesting. The experimental anvil has not been updated to work with the more modern smithing interface. You no longer just click on it. You need to use the bronze bar with the experimental anvil. How many pages was Chrono Trigger? It was a 37 page, 24,000 word, two and a half hour essay. It's finished, and it should premiere soon. I want to say tomorrow. I want to say tomorrow. So Sunday evening, set aside two and a half hours. I have... Isn't two and a half hours a bit long? Yeah. If I had more time, I would have made a shorter video. That's what they always say. But no, so I've gone through every single ending. I've gone through uh, every single secret. I've found all of the triple techs. I got all of the optional bosses, all that stuff. I found every way to kill Lavos. Yeah. But it is a it's a 22-hour game, to be fair. It is definitely a 22-hour game. But condensing a 22-hour game down into a use prototype dart tip. Did I make one dart tip out of that bar? Just one tip. Excellent. Just the tip. That's all we've made. Just just tickle the tip with a feather and you'll be fine. Stop it. Let's go back to RuneScape. Right, bring the prototype the prototype dart to Al Shabim. Alright, the prototip. Um Fun Orb, was it any good? Oh, don't. Loved Fun Orb so much. Right, uh, Coco, can you run me back to the no, yeah, over there, Al Shabim. That's the dude. Good old Ali Shabs. That's his name. I absolutely loved Fun Orb. Bring it back. You cowards. Elena, if you're in the chat right now, who do I need to sit down and talk to to bring Fun Orb back? How much does it cost to host Fun Orb? I, I will look into that. We'll do a Kickstarter. It will be great, but legit, Fun Orb was great. Uh, Arcanist was fantastic. Why was it ever taken down? Ever. How much do I need to pay to get Fun Orb off you? When I was younger, my grandpa, money, we have the license. I'm just having a look. I see, release. It's an interesting story. I, I don't know, I have no strong opinions on it one way or the other, but thank you for telling me. We'll buy you dinner. Name your price. What is Fun Orb? Okay. Fun Orb was an extra website started by Jagex that contained mini games. One of them was called Arcanist, which was effectively a clone of Worms, but better. 
Worms, it was fantastic. Armies of Gilinor was good. There was the Void Shooter on there as well. That was great. It was a real shame, but genuinely, I'm going to need to... I'm going to ask someone about Fun Orb, because Fun Orb was definitely... There was potential there. There was potential. Fun Orb rants aren't worth... They are, Darcy. They definitely are. All right, how dare you? Imagine Fun Orb rants are... Oh, they are, oh, sorry. I was thinking you said aren't. I was like, oh, Darcy, we're going to fall out. But I did misread. I apologize. You are correct. I was I was wrong. You were right. And I'm sorry. It was genuine right there. J Josh Meany, don't don't leave. Oh no. Oh no, I'm gonna get cancelled. Kira's gonna make Kira TV is gonna make a video on me. This YouTuber got cancelled for arguing with one of his viewers saying that something was good when he misread. Time to mass report Josh for bullying. Look, this isn't New World. All right, you can't just ban someone through mass reports. Uh, in all seriousness, though, Kira TV's uh, videos are great. I very much do enjoy them. I think Kira himself is a nice guy. Right, where are we going? Uh, unequip all combat gear and go back to the camp. Who made this quest? Coco, please take me back to the camp. I'm ready to run. I've drank a stamina potion. Let's go. We're on our way. Love Kira. Kira is stellar. He is. Kira's great. It's Kira TV. Kira TV has done so much cool stuff. The insane downfall of a streamer bully. Is Kira still a member of the Shadow Cabal? Well, the, the great thing is that the real Shadow Cabal genuinely was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> because, you know, when I contacted all of the really big streamers and I'm like, I've got this really dumb idea for a Shadow Cabal. And they were like, I'm in. Straight away, everyone everyone was like, yes, it's happening. 100%, we're all in. We all agree with you. We can do it. Uh, it was uh, it was lovely. What I sometimes forget is big streamers, big content creators, people that I look up to and I have a great deal of respect for are still just people that like playing games, people that like doing cool stuff and fun stuff. I really like that. I mean, the Spiffing Brit was great with it. It was so much fun. I think I, I sometimes... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Hang on, I'm trying to change out of my clothing. Okay, hang on, the guard. What? Okay, fine, we change out of the clothing, then we escape, and then we go back in. There we go. Now, I sometimes very much do forget that big streamers, big successful people, are still just people. And sometimes, when you talk to them, they've got a really good sense of humour. Contact a bunch of random streamers with the We've Been Discovered flee at once. Wasn't that an actual thing once? There was a, a politician ages ago, or some kind of comedian, that did send a letter to all of his friends that said, All is discovered, flee at once. And like two of his friends just left town. I'm sure that was true. I can't guarantee who it was. It was a long time ago, back when, you know, information was difficult to come by. Yeah. Good evening to you, Eros. How are you doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day. Quinn, good evening to you. Hopefully you're having a nice day as well. Right, let's not talk to them. Let's open the gate. In we go. We want to get thrown into the thing. So let's run through. Come on. Run through to the thing. Here we go. Uh, J45K, no offense, but I use your videos to fall asleep. Very relaxing. That's absolutely fine. That's what they're meant for. They're like better ASMR. That's it. This is a great spot. You're not meant to be able to get there, are you? That's This is a spot that you're legit not meant to be able to get to. I'm sure you're not. No, you're not. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, cool. That's one of the rarer spots in the game then. Coco, I'm going to follow you. Can you please run me through this place? That's why we broke the door with too many people. Cool. No, this is good. That's what they're meant for. Hey, if you want to put my videos on and fall asleep, that's okay. Ad revenue don't know. Ad revenue, you don't care. If you're asleep while they're playing, that's okay. Maybe it's subliminal. Maybe you wake up one day and you're like, can you imagine if ads were subliminal when you were? You just, you just left YouTube playing and you wake up and you're like, I've got to join Brilliant right now. I need some Raycons right now. I t I'm going to order some HelloFresh. And then you just go and do it. That's what would happen if you fell asleep to YouTube and you just woke up and suddenly every single advert, every single sponsorship, <laughs> you just, you woke up. God, I've got to download Raid Shadow Legends through NordVPN. 
That is what would happen. Google says Sir Arthur Conan Doyle sent a telegram to 12 mates telling them flee. That sounds great. I would do that. Would that be human programming? It would. Yeah, it really would. Okay, cool. What are we doing? So, uh, slave shirt, slave robes, slave boots, all good. Talk to the... I've got to talk to this dude. Don't kill him. Here's a pineapple. Let me go through. A deal's a deal. Through we go into the old mine cave. The ads are louder than the streams. That's true. So, I've been contacted by a couple of companies, and a lot of people say to me, Josh, why don't you have merch? Why don't you sell merch? There's a reason I don't sell merch. I'm really lazy, and setting it up is really complicated. That's why I don't sell merch. I also... And again, Darcy, can you please walk me over to that barrel? Here's another reason. I started YouTube sitting in my room, playing RuneScape, talking to people. Well, Twitch, YouTube, same kind of thing there. Right now, I'm sitting in my room, playing RuneScape, talking to people. There has not yet been a switch, if you will, a flip, from seeing myself as that, you know, guy that just sits in his room playing games, to someone who has got a big enough following, if you will, to sell merchandise to, who even care about it. So people come up to me and go, oh my god, I'd definitely buy a hoodie with your logo on it. I don't have a logo. And why? You know, if, if you want a, a hoodie with a streamer's logo on it, just, and again, this is not legal advice, but just find a PNG of the logo and go to someone that prints hoodies. It's, that's what I do. That's fine. But maybe people just want, you know, mugs with some kind of branding on it, waistcoats, body pillows. So, anyway. I have been contacted by a couple of companies who make merchandise and a couple of companies who want to do some kind of sponsorship stuff. But I said, look, I'm not going to do big sponsorships because I'm not bothered about that and I don't want to feel like I'm selling people things. But if we want to do some kind of like affiliate marketing, I'll just put a link in the description or something. Most of it is powdered gaming drinks. You know those drinks? I mean, this is just water and kind of lemon flavor, but not powder, like lemon cordial style stuff. But those powdered gaming drinks are everywhere they are literally just caffeine just powdered caffeine and flavor but they're not terrible do any of you use them do any of you wake up and think oh i've got to have a lovely powdered gaming energy drink because i mean i've drank some of the powdered stuff before like if I'm going to the gym and I'm thinking, all right, I've got to get a bit of pre-workout in. It's just caffeine, man. It's just powdered caffeine. Protein shakes, that kind of stuff. Coffee is powder. It sounds like an extra step. Just buy an energy drink. Yeah, pretty much. So I just... I've actually started taking meetings. And this links back to the the idea of staying confident and making other people feel awkward. I've got so many emails weekly. They're like, oh, hey, Mr. Strife Hayes, we love your videos. We'd love to have a meeting with you about our merchandise. Okay, cool. Set one up. Meeting starts, and they're like, okay, so, uh, Josh, tell us about you. I'm like, no. No, you tell me what you like about my channel, because you started your email with, we love your stuff. What do you love? Why do you think my demographic is your demographic? And they're like, Oh, well, you know, why don't you send us some numbers over? No, you contacted me. Those numbers are all publicly available. You know exactly what my demographic is. You know what kind of videos I make. You know what kind of viewership I have. You you emailed me. So if you want to come to me with a pitch for a possible business relationship, I'm happy to listen, but I'm not going to start a meeting by explaining to you who I am because I didn't go to you. And this is a business thing. And if our very first communication starts with, we love your stuff, and then a meeting proves that you don't know who I am, we've immediately started that business relationship with a lie. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Some of the best business meetings I have when I said to them, so what do you like? They actually responded with, oh, yeah, I've watched the, the New World videos, I've watched this video about this MMO, I used to play this MMO myself, I've done that, done this, done the other. And they could just reel off facts about stuff they'd watched. And I went, yeah, okay, cool. And then eventually, you know, the end of kind of meetings, this was true of, um, this was actually true of RuneScape. 
So when Jagex contacted me and said, hey, we want to, you know, have you review the RuneScape 3 mobile client. We like your videos. I'm like, oh, which ones do you like? They're like, they specifically said, oh, we liked where you found the glitch in this game at this point and the glitch in that game at that point. And at the end, they went, so do you want to kind of negotiate salary? I went, no, I don't. I want you to pay me what you think I'm worth because clearly you have actually put the effort in there. So now I'm just going to trust you. You trusted me. I'll trust you. Let's have that work. And it was the best working relationship. Rat, thank you so much for everything you do. You are more than welcome. Really glad to have found your YouTube and Twitch. Here's to many more great moments. Thank you very much. I hope there can be many more great moments too. I heard a rumor you don't play the games. You just voice them over, but I don't want to believe this. Okay, here's the truth. I play every single game in every single video that I've made. If I ever use footage that I have not played, then the YouTuber that that footage came from is listed in the top left. And I think I've had to do this once or twice for games that are offline, like Wildstar, games that I can't get access to, like the very first version of Final Fantasy XIV. But any other footage that you see, it's all there. It's, it's all there. And people are like, does that mean that you've downloaded all of those dodgy Chinese and Korean MMOs? Yes. I have a lot of faith in malware bytes. You know, sometimes I look at Google, I look at Windows Defender and I'm like, I am really trusting you on this one, buddy, because the website that we've had to go to to get this game, I wouldn't go there. You know, this looks like Wish ordered from Wish. That's how bad that is. Sometimes people look and go, are you not scared? Hey, if Google wants to tell me that Google Chrome trusts its own internal virus protection, then I've got to trust it as well. In another note, this is my third PC because the first two of them just got so slow. I'm like, I don't know what's running in the background, but it is killing them. Okay, cool. Let's uh, search the barrel. I will take the barrel. Uh, but no, in, in all seriousness, yeah, trial by fire for antivirus protection. Can you imagine that? Malware bytes gets downloaded. It's like, oh boy, I've just been downloaded onto a PC. Can't wait for my first day of work. League of Angels 4, and it just gets immediately swamped by, like, every virus known to man. It's <laughs> two hours later after the game's installed, Malware Bytes just stands there, bloodied, triumphant, with a sword above its head. I got them all! What's next? Oh, I found this really dodgy game on Steam. All right, bring it on! That's what happens. That's exactly what happens. Oh, man. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there's like some random program running where they can hear my microphone. Sometimes I forget to turn my microphone off while I'm playing the game in order to record it, because I'm recording it on OBS, so I record it on like the, the desktop audio so I can capture and replay the game audio, and my microphone is plugged into the same thing, so sometimes I forget to turn it off, so I'm watching my own footage back, and something really stupid will happen in the game, and I can just gently hear in the background of, what the fuck? And that's when I know something dumb has happened. Okay, cool. What are we doing? Uh, Right-click search the minecart. Search. How long have you guys been here? We've been, we've been playing for two hours and we've so far done one and a half quests. It's going to be a long... It's a long way till that quest cape. We're going to get there, guys. Don't you worry. Right, you jump into the edge of the cart but fall off. I am bad at this. Yeah, let's just try it. Come on, get in. Get in. I'm failing to jump into a minecart. This is... This is not great. This is not great at all. Come on. What have we got? What have we... There we go. There we... Riding it, there we go. We're off for a nice ride now. Grab onto the sides, we're going riding. That's that's my chat up line. That's sixty percent of the time it works every time. It's just like a Minecraft villager. That's what I am. I do base most of my movements off Minecraft villagers. Agility courses are gonna be great. Oh god, can you imagine? Okay, uh, Darcy, please take me to Anna. Here we go. I see. Fully erect says hello. That's another one of my chat-up lines, actually. Again, works every time. Every single time. 100% success rate. Provided you discount all the times it doesn't work. Okay. Anna, get in the barrel. Amazingly, another one of my chat-up lines. 
That one has to work, because if it doesn't, you have to start running. Okay, here we go. I don't think I've seen you before. I'm, uh, yeah, what's your name? What's your name? My name? Oh, how sweet. My name is Anna. I come from Al-Karid, though we're only recently moved there. I was born and did most of my growing up in Varrock. I thought the desert might be interesting. What a surprise I got. Uh, do you want to go back to al Anna? Yeah. Sure. I'm a she's like a prisoner, and you're like, do you want to leave? And she's like, yeah, all right. Sure. I miss my mum. Her name is Irina, and she is probably waiting for me. How do you propose we get out of here, though? I'm sure you've noticed the many square-jawed guards around here. This is turning into a Mills and Boone novel. Like, halfway through, she's like, oh, goodness. How will we ever escape the desert filled with such strong and dashing guards? Their tanned skin and rippling muscles keeping me in the mine. All right, Anna, like, if you're having a good time, just say. All right, if this is like some kind of weird retreat for the rich, I don't need to save you. Me and my parrot Twitch chat are here to get you out if you want to get out. All right, like, Anna, let's use barrel on Anna. Anna, get in the barrel. Shh, it's for your own good. This is proof that RuneScape just... You are playing a sociopath. Straight, we're, we're parrots now. Yeah, the parrot on my shoulder is called Twitch Chat. Anna plays a star... Yes, she does. Where is the cat cam? The cat is downstairs somewhere. You manage to squeeze Anna in the barrel despite her many complaints. I don't fit in this barrel. Wet me out. Well... Whatever you say, Anna. How about we escape the, uh, the evil slave mine first, then I'll see if I can wet you out. Alright, let's, let's leave. Sometimes I say things and then regret saying them. Coco, please take me out of this. I've got someone that needs wetting out of a barrel. If I want to quest cape in any reasonable time, I need to do three and four quests per stream. Look, Darcy, we, we both know that we're not getting three three to four quests per stream done. Use Anna in the barrel on the minecart. Anna, get in the cart. Shinji, get in the robot, and off we go. You carefully put Anna in the cart and then just kick her down. This has got to be a crime somewhere. Somewhere we have broken the law. Not exactly sure... Hang on. Where are, there's no map here. They're just staring straight ahead. Oh yeah, can you hear the meows from outside? The cat is very angry right now. The cat is screaming. This is the most questionable kidnapping. Oh no, there's no questions about it. This is straight up kidnapping. If I was going to make a, another video about old school RuneScape, it would be how many crimes do you commit in the process of getting a quest cape? Because we also, there's a, literally a quest called Regicide. You know, we kill a king. We kill men, king two kings. One of them's Elvish, which I think is worse. Not sure where the hierarchy is, but like, that's that's bad. You know, we burn a forest down. We kill some kind of dream creature. We've killed more mythical creatures than we can possibly remember. We commit a lot of crimes. Oh my god, I am the worst acrobat. Just get in the minecart. Who decided this is an agility check? Who? Who decided that that was fun? Gilinor is a truly unforgiving place. It is true. Slayer is a skill. What, do you mean uh, just killing things repeat? Oh yeah, that's true. But like, killing and killing monsters is different to killing, like, elected officials. <laughs> There's a difference there. Those zombies were hanging around doing nothing. That's okay. Walking up and just straight up nailing the king. And by that I mean, like, hitting it... Not that well. That's probably a crime as well, though, to be fair. Unless the king's into it, in which case he can pardon you. But you know what I mean. Okay, cool. We've got to... Let's search the barrel. I'm assuming we search the barrel. Right-click search the barrel to get Anna a gout. Did they elect the king? I didn't vote for you. Anna says, let me out. Nope. Have we got you? Examine Anna in a barrel. If we drop Anna in a barrel, can we get another one? Is there a thing that we can do there? Can you can you drop trick Anna? Darcy, can you please walk me over to the winch bucket? This is abuse. Look, it's for your own good. How far can we take Anna? That's true. Should we just not finish this quest? Uh, use... Hang on. 
Right click use winch bucket to send Anna to the surface. Use winch bucket. Hey, you with the weapon and armor. That's not me. Okay, do I... Oh, I see. Use Anna in a barrel on winch bucket. Look at winch bucket. You see barrels of rocks being placed as they're lifted. Use. Right click use the winch bucket to send Anna to... Oh, cool. The guard notices the barrel that you're carrying. Hey, a barrel looks heavy. Need a hand? Yes. Yes, I do. There we go. High Alk Anna in a barrel. Can you High Alk Anna in a barrel? Hey, man, I've been spamming your vids on YouTube while I'm at work, like a podcast. Love your content. Thank you very much. There'll be another video out tomorrow for a, a two and a half hour recap of Chrono Trigger. Just in case, you know, you needed that in your life. In case you woke up and thought, how are 28 year old SNES RPGs doing? I'll give you, a, uh, give you a hint. Pretty good. They're doing pretty good. Turns out when you don't have a hell of a lot of graphical power, you pretty much have to rely on writing and mechanics. And they're pretty good. Why are you just following people? Oh, I'll tell you why. Let me get out this quest first, then I'll, uh, I'll tell you exactly, exactly what I'm doing. So, I'm playing a version of the game that I'm calling Lazy Man Mode, which is why my character is called Lazy Strife. You know when other better streamers... Return to the surface. If Anna was captured again, search the barrel next to the minecart for her. Can we... Oh, the return over there. Cool. You know when other better streamers play RuneScape, but they limit themselves. And they're like, you know, Iron Man mode, Locked Man mode, can't do this, can't do that. Well, I decided that that sounds like a lot of work. So I'm going to do the opposite. I am following as many people as I can to get through the game. I'm letting people just give me items. And I'm letting people weaken enemies before I come in and kill them. So, effectively, I'm almost outsourcing the effort for completing the game to you guys. So there's a, a small kind of entourage that just hangs around. We help each other out. Basically, RuneScape 3. Yeah, pretty much. I'm just letting the everyone else is doing the effort. I'm just here. But everyone else, you are the guys doing the effort. So, I'm... Right click operate the winch in the southwest of camp. Brady, please take me to the winch. This looks perfect for a troll to throw a wrench into the mix. Oh, there will be. Without a doubt. There will definitely be someone that throws a bit of a spanner in the works, as they say. But I think what I'm trying to do is collectively see if all of us can complete effectively. RuneScape. Working together. You search the barrel and find Anna. Look, Anna, we've got you. Use Anna on the cart in the middle of camp. Use Anna on... Can't we just teleport her? Can't we just give her, like, a teleport tablet? Here you go, Anna. Break this. You'll appear in Varrock. That's a major plot point in this. Why can we not simply give Anna a teleport tablet? Did you die yet? Uh, no, I don't think I have, actually. So... Even though I'm like a hard... I suppose I'm like a casual hardcore. Pollock! Pollock, come here! Come here, you... Come here, you... There are people outside, and so my guard dog has to guard me. Pollock, you don't need to guard me from everything. It's okay. It's okay. We're safe. The thing is, this is an extremely nervous dog. Extremely nervous. And he's very scared. And he's, he's, he's not cowardly, but he will put himself in danger in order to make sure I am safe. That's what it is. He's terrified of everything, but the thing that scares him most is thinking that I'm not protected. It's okay. It's okay. Which I suppose is quite cute. It is sweet. The problem is he protects us from everything, like the postman. A car door. A goldfish farting three houses over. You know, anything... And he will be like, must protect. Must immediately protect. He's okay, though. He is, yeah. He is lovely and cute. And then there's the other dog. Come here, you. Come on. Yes, you can be here as well. Those of you who are regular... Okay, let's let's begin. Those of you who are regulars on the stream will know Piper. Uh, Piper is a little dachshund. And Piper has a thing about cleaning me. Piper sees me as a... A terrible dog pretty much she looks at me and she's like josh you are useless 
you don't you don't lick anywhere near enough must clean must groom must protect must schlorp well that's i never thought i'd read that word but i'm glad we'll do a bit of dog asmr piper are you are you happy you good you, apollo yes thank you for protecting me from everything thanks piper my eye is very clean now okay that's good that's good cleaning, cleaning has been done thank you cleaning has finished now we're okay right okay let's get back to rescue me <laughs> i love that anna was in the barrel anna just peeks out and just sees a dog licking my face anna we'll get back to you don't worry all right cool right i'll uh, i'll see you around dude uh one good turn deserves another Are you trying to get me fired fired no shot perhaps <laughs> see we're making him laugh i'm in for a penny and for a pound Oh, okay, we uh, we make this driver laugh through puns. My hair has done a thing. I'm not going to fix it. I'm, I'm rocking this now. This is very much the Brendan Fraser look. And somebody outside has discovered cars. Right, okay, come on. Let me explain to the prison riot in 10 minutes, mate. Get your cart out of here. You can't leave me here, then, mate. I'll get killed as well. Come on, let me jump in the car. Off we pop. Off we toddle. Talk to the minecart driver. Deliver hope wishes to trade with me. What are we what are we trading deliver hope? I'll happily trade some stuff. My shorts! <laughs> oh, I almost forgot them, you babe! Thank you so much. Genuinely, I nearly forgot this short. They're soiled. Good. As I left them. Okay, come on, minecart driver. Hurry up, get in, or I'll go without you. Do we search the wooden cart now? Search the wooden cart to escape. Let's do this. Off. We pop. Climb onto the card and off we go. Can't believe I've missed two hours of this. Well, unfortunately, you're about to miss more because I'm about to be uh, be finishing. Myth! Myth, take me somewhere. Ideally, all the way back. Anna in the barrel. We... How far through the game can you go with Anna in the barrel? Can we just drop her at God Wars or something? Anna, you've missed a lot. Here is Zolra. I think that's... Uh... You know, Vorkath would be a little bit surprised if you died and then just a girl in a barrel rolled out. Can we take her to the dream world and just leave her there? Anna does raids. Anna is the companion cube. Yes. That is a definitely a YouTube series in the making. How far can you take Anna in the barrel? All right, Anna in the barrel, you are out. You are welcome. Thank you for the wrought iron key. Don't know what it is. But give me some experience. The guide says that after gaining the experience, I should choose agility for both rewards. And you know, wow, okay, 20 agility. Choose agility again. 20, we've gone from 26 agility almost immediately. Finally, she is wet out, which is impressive because this is in a desert. I think that speaks to my skills. You've completed Tourist Trap. Quest points, mining camp, throwing darts, fletching, smithing, and thieving. Beautiful stuff. Let's put the shorts back on. Let's put all of my my stuff back on. Uh, okay. We also need that, that, and that. Uh, yes, we also had Brad. Brady, sorry. You had a couple of the things for me. Brady, could we please trade? There was a pickaxe, there was some coal, shield, amulet of glory, and one anglerfish. I've only got one, two. I've only got three inventory slots. So I'm going to need you to keep the anglerfish, and I'll give you a bronze bar. There we go. We've traded that. Bronze bar for the anglerfish. Switch it around. That accepts everything. Trade is modified and I get my stuff back. Thank you very much, you absolute babe. Let's go back through the shanty pass. Josh, am I playing anything off stream like Tok or Jedi Survivor? Honestly, no. I have very, very little time off stream. My time off stream is spent either playing retro games or uh, trying to play. I'm playing some Dungeons and Dragons online still because I like this. This is the slowest run ever. It pretty much is, but you know what? I've had a good time. Right, we've done two more quests. Next quest is the Grand Tree. Have I done that? No, that's Gnome Glider Transportation. Fantastic. But with that, it is two hours into the stream. I normally stream for about two hours. Damon Rage, you want to trade? What are you going to trade? I'll happily, I'll accept a trade from you. What are we trading? You survive, you, uh, you show me some cool stuff? Elven Legwear. 
Okay. I'll accept it. What kind of... What are we looking at for elven legwear? How does that make me look? Oh. What are we feeling? Are we feeling elven legwear? Or are we feeling shorts? I don't know. I may have used your video as a source for a seminal paper in my college. I am proud. I genuinely am proud. That does look pretty fashion scapey. I'll give you that. But that also gets me the legs out. That's true. We'll keep that for the time being. I'm pretty much updating my fashion scape as we go through. Instead of mid-maxing, you're, you're max midding. That's what I am. Max midding. Absolutely in the middle. Right, ladies and gents, it is the evening. I've got to go and watch the Chrono Trigger video through. The video should be out tomorrow. No deliver hope. We're not going to Camelot. It is a silly place. Guys, thank you very much for joining me. I will see you tomorrow. Hopefully, if I can stream after the Chrono Trigger video. Apart from that, it's Saturday. It's warm. Go and enjoy your weekend. Thank you very much for spending a few hours with me. Take care, good night, and God bless.